Hi folks, it's Connie from Faf Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. I have recorded this intro with the piece before I've even touched it because I wanted to show you the before. I'm hoping this will be a, a really good piece of furniture to flip because I've got visions for it. It's completely gonna change the look. Obviously, you can see now it's quite a dated piece of furniture it's solid pine it's very orangey it's got a lot of knots and those handles are awful um, it's a mishmash of eras the handles the kind of don't they just don't go with the piece it's, it's a bizarre piece but I see potential I see potential so I'm going to give this a makeover um, I'm going to use silk all in one mineral paint. I think I know. I think I know what colour I'm going to use, um, and hopefully it turns out how I vision it in my head. Um, so stay tuned. Find out how I did it. Right. First things first. Those handles have got to go. They are super dated. They don't work with the piece and well they're just vile oh there's a dog um so yeah the handles are being removed i always take the hardware off before i clean and that just gives you a nice flat surface also you would not believe how much dirt gets trapped behind handles so i always make sure i take them off and give the piece a really really good clean as always, I'm using Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner because it is a degreasing cleaner and that's just going to get all of those years of polish, cleaning products, fingerprints, oils from hands, all those kind of things. So it's going to get it all off and I'm also making sure that um, I'm cleaning the inside of this piece because I am going to be painting the interiors of those cupboards, mainly because you can see through them with the doors being slatted you can see that through them so I want this to be kind of a quite a slick piece so I'm cleaning the inside of the cupboards just so that um, I can paint the inside of there I'm also going to paint the underneath of this as well um, so I'm flipping it over and giving that a good clean also as always, when you have used Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner, you want to make sure that you rinse your piece thoroughly using clean warm water to get any residue off. Once that completely dried, I then scuff sanded all over and you'll notice this piece, I've left it upside down. That's because I'm going to paint the underneath of this first. Quite often if I am painting the underneath of a piece, what I'm going to do is paint that first because then you aren't flipping your furniture onto a freshly painted top. The other thing I'm going to do while the piece is upside down is strip all the varnish off the legs or the base. So these legs are quite unique and I wanted to make a feature of them. So as you can see, the varnish on this has given the piece quite an orangey tone. So I'm gonna strip the varnish off the legs and stain them using a Dixie Bell stain to kind of neutralize that orange and give it a little bit more of a pale wood finish. The rest of the piece has only been scuff sanded because that's getting painted. It's just the legs that I am stripping off. And if you wanna see which sander that I use, um, you can check out my other video from a couple of weeks ago on my channel. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually apply the stain to the legs. And this is because if I overlap the stain onto the underneath of the piece, it won't matter so much because I am going to be painting the base. Uh, sorry, the underneath if you like. So I'm going to stain the legs first and I'm using the stain Eau Naturelle, so that's the colour Eau Naturelle, and it's a Voodoo Gel Stain from Dixie Bell Paint. I'm applying it using an applicator pad, which can be reused if you've used it with water-based products, and this is a water-based stain, so you can see it's just taking that orange tone and giving it a much paler finish. And once that stain had been applied and I was happy with the level of colour that I had, then I sealed it with a flat clear coat and I'm using a foam and dandy applicator brush. 
Again, I'm going to get all of the bottom of this piece done first. That way I can flip it over and I know that I don't have to flip it over again onto the freshly painted top. So in total for this piece, I actually used two coats of the Voodoo Gel Stain in Au Naturel just to build up that kind of coverage. Um, it's a great product. It can be built up depending on the level of coverage that you want. Um, or you can leave it um, as a one coat finish and wipe it back and it just gives you a really nice kind of uh, subtle finish. But I used two on this one because the pine was quite orangey and I used two coats of the clear coat flat just to make sure that I had complete coverage and it was nice and protected and sealed. Okay, so I decided to use Cactus from Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. Or did I? <laughs> I actually changed my mind halfway through this project because um, what happened was I pasted, painted the base of the piece. As you can see there, I'm using Silk um, All-in-One Mineral Paint in the colour Cactus. That's the colour I'm using that you can see now. And I also ordered some handles off Etsy for this piece. And like a fool I didn't actually check how long they were going to take to be delivered and when I did check it was two to three weeks so I actually left the piece with just the base finished so it was looking at me for quite a long time with that base painted in cactus and I realized that I wasn't actually that huge a fan of that color with the base it needed something with a little bit more depth um, so I suppose the handles taking so long to arrive was kind of a good thing because um, otherwise I probably would have just gone ahead and painted the entire thing with cactus and yeah I just feel like the colour that I mixed was a better suited colour to the piece. But we will get back to the colour mixing in just a second. So as you can see, the old handles have left some nice holes which are going to need to be filled because I need to drill new holes for the new handles. I am using Dixie Mud in brown with a Dixie Mud spatula to apply it. And I've also taped off the back of the drawers so that you don't get any excess of the Dixie Mud spilling through and going into the interior of drawers. So I've just taped the holes off at the back and you can apply it with either a spatula as I'm doing on the drawers or for the little door, which has just had one single hole, I'm just applying it with my finger. Eagle-eyed viewers might have spotted the really ugly hinges on this piece at the very start in my intro. Um, I knew straight away that they definitely had to go. So I ordered some more contemporary hinges, um, more kind of in keeping with the piece and ones that were also hidden on the inside of the door instead of on the exterior like the old ones were. So again, I just had to fill those holes with Dixie Mud to ensure that they couldn't be seen once the piece was painted. Okay, I told you we'd get back to the mixing of colours. So I've got three silk mineral paint colours here. I had a little experiment and I've mixed them together. They're all listed in the description below. And I've put it in one of my very handy little squeezy bottles just because they have measuring, um, measuring, what's the word I'm looking for? Increments on the side of the bottle which allows me to measure exactly how much of each colour I'm adding into the bottle. So if I ever needed to recreate this colour, I can do. Now, I'm not usually this savvy or um, meticulous when it comes to mixing paint. I usually just throw some paint in a tub and wait till I get the colour that I want. But with this piece, I was aware that because I was painting the inside, the outside, I needed to redo the underneath. Um, I was potentially going to have to remix this paint colour because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need for the entire piece. So um, that's why I decided to measure exactly how much paint of each colour I used. 
So I've just painted the inside of the cupboards, you've just seen that. And the reason for doing the inside first is just because it's going to be more tricky to do so if the paint on the outside of the piece is wet. And we also need a name for this green that I have invented. So if you can think of any names whatsoever for this green, make sure you drop them in the comments below. Okay, so I've just slowed this down a little bit because I just want to tell you about what I did to the knots on this piece. So pine is notoriously bad for bleed through, especially if you've got a knotty piece of pine like I have here. You can just see how many knots are on that side panel. So what I did after I'd scuff sanded is I actually spot primed using Boss in clear just over the areas where there's knots. And I did two coats of that just to make sure that they are sealed and they're not going to bleed through. I know that Silk has got a built-in stain blocking primer. Another picture of a dog there, just wanting to come through. Always gets in my way. Um, I know that Silk's got a built-in stain blocking primer. However, it is only equivalent to one coat of Boss. And knots are notoriously bad. So I just wanted to give that extra level of protection over the knotted areas. So I'm going to go in after coat one and use a Dixie Belle sanding sponge just to sand in between my layers of paint. You don't have to do this with silk mineral paint, but it's a step that I'm going to do to give me a really flawless finish. And if you do do this step, just make sure that you are removing the dust off the surface once you've sanded. I'm using a microfiber cloth just to remove that dust. Okay, so we're bringing out the big guns for the top. Um, I am using a roller instead of a brush now. I did brush the first coat, but it took a while. Uh, a roller's much quicker, and you can get a really good finish with a roller. I actually prefer a brush to paint with, um, but because this top is so flat and so large a surface it's just going to make things a lot quicker with a roller and also like I say you can get a really really flawless almost sprayed like finish with a roller. You'll notice that I am using a paper plate to take my paint off onto my roller and there's no other reason for that other than the fact that I'm lazy and I don't like washing out roller trays and um, usually if I do use a roller tray I'll line it with cling film or tin foil um, and I just couldn't be able to do that either so I used a paper plate and then once that's obviously dried you can just throw that away um, and basically all I'm doing is applying the paint in one direction and then when I have finished application of the entire top what I'm going to do is just get my roller and without using any pressure at all on that roller, just move it in one direction. So I'm starting at the left and going to the right. Like I say, there's no pressure on this roller whatsoever. I am literally just smoothing that paint down before it's started to dry. And that's just going to make sure that you get a really smooth finish. So you'll notice that I've actually taken the doors off now. Um, that's because I just found that it was going to be easier to get a better finish when they were lying on the floor because obviously they have that slatted door. So um, I'm not going to be able to roll these because I'm going to need to get my bristles in all of those little slats. And the best way to paint doors like this, and this goes for spindles as well, is to use a lot less paint than what you ordin ordinarily would use because you are going to get drips and it's going to pool in areas. So I am using a lot less paint than what I ordinarily would do with silk. Um, again, it's just going on very, very lightly. Um, the first light coat is almost see-through in this case. That's how little paint that I'm using. Um, and that is just because, again, I don't want the paint to drip through those slats and cause any issues on the other side of the door, which I am also going to paint. 
patience is virtue here. It's only two small doors, but they did take three coats of paint each to build up that coverage, just because I'm using a lot less paint than what I ordinarily would do. Um, and that was three coats on the front and three coats each on the back. So each one has to obviously have drying time between it. Um, but this is the best way you're gonna get that really nice finish without drips or pools of paint all over the place. I've just sped this bit up because it's just the second coat being applied, but you can really see the coverage difference on coat two. And also if you do get any drips going through your piece or if you're doing spindles or anything similar, don't worry too much, just sand those when they're dry and you can repaint over them. It's not too much of a problem, um, but it's easier to do it this way than to try and keep sanding out drips as you go. Okay, so the doors are done. I wish it was that quick in real life. And I'm just gonna sand the edges clean. So I went over a little bit, the edges, um, as you do, because I didn't take them off. But I always wanted to keep this quite clean and I'm gonna sand it back to that natural pine just to kind of tie in with that base that I sanded and stained um, a paler color. The other reason that I'm not going to paint the edges of these doors is because they fit obviously in the inside of those cupboards which I've painted. So by adding paint onto the edges and the interior, you are adding little sort of dimensions if you like. You're adding to the dimensions of the piece. So it might only be millimetres but that can make a difference especially if the doors fit quite snugly into the piece, which these do. So to alleviate any problems, I'm just gonna leave these basically pine. Um, I'm not gonna put anything on them. I'm just gonna leave them raw pine. Um, if you wanted to paint them, what you'd need to do is probably plane a couple of millimeters off the doors all around so that you, when you added your paint, it wasn't gonna cause any issues with sticking or rubbing. And the last thing to do is to put the hinges back on and apply the new handles. You can actually already see the handles in the background that my other half did. I'm not going to take credit for that um, because I hate putting handles on pieces. There's my secret confession to you. I hate it. And that's it. There's no top coating with silk. It's got a built-in top coat. It's super durable and it gives a really nice sheen as you can see from that angled picture there. It just catches the light and the final stage picture. I really hope you like it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this transformation. It's completely changed the look of the piece and I am absolutely loving that custom green colour that I mixed. I will obviously drop the recipe and all the stuff that I've used below as always and make sure you are subscribing to my channel for more videos.